sister was 21 years old, she went out with a group of her girlfriends to a um, bar in downtown Cleveland. And when she got home that night, she had been in a fight with her boyfriend, an argument. She told him on the phone that she was going to a place far away. After the phone call, she took the keys from my mother's um, car, which was parked in the garage, and she fell asleep. And it wasn't until the next morning that the neighborhood boy who came over to cut our lawn discovered her. And by that time, it was too late. My family and myself, we were blindsided by this. We didn't understand how this could have happened. And we had no idea that she had been in so much pain. Writing History of a Suicide was not an easy book to write. And it took me 10 years on and off to figure out how to tell this story about my sister. And when my son Lucas was nearing those years of adolescence, when my sister Kim's life began to falter and become insecure, I felt more and more the, the persistent need to want to tell this story and to want to be honest, um, also to honor my sister. I think that when somebody uh, ends their life through suicide, there's so much shame around the experience that what happens is the suicide gets silenced and it's almost as if there's a double punishment because now survivors can't talk about the person that they've lost, that they've shared family holidays with and watched grow up, play baseball, go to their senior prom. Um, these moments in a life become silenced and so in writing about Kim, I was able to relive the life that she had when she was very happy and exuberant. And um, I, I hope that my book is filled with those moments of exuberance. I felt very strongly that I did not want to write a dark book. And how do you not write a dark book about suicide, I think, is by giving the suicide life.